chicos y chicas, I am Ricardo Laguna. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable time watching this YouTube video as I'm about to change the dynamics of my YouTube channel by driving it more towards business, real estate, and lifestyle. Now, for those of you guys who don't know who Ricardo Laguna is, let's start this episode by introducing myself. Once again guys, thank you so much for tuning into my video and it would mean the world if you guys hit that like button. And for those of you guys that haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe as I am aiming to have new episodes every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So now that we got that out of the way, who is Ricardo Laguna? Well, this young fella was born in 1982 in La Paz, Baja California Sur where my dad used to work for Mexicana Airlines. And when I was about eight years old, the airline wasn't doing so well. So my dad overheard that there was gonna be an option to retire sooner than planned, or B, uh, move to this other openings that uh, the Mexicana Airlines was gonna offer my dad. So as that said, my dad ended up picking, moving to Tijuana. So that's where the Laguna family packed up and started the new chapter where me and my brother weren't the cool kids anymore. And what do I mean by that? Well, back when we were living in La Paz, we were the cool kids in the neighborhood because we were the only ones that had the Nintendo. And I still clearly remember having probably the only kid in the whole city who had the Michael Jordan shoes. So everybody would be drooling all over them. But now that those shoes are a little older because it's been about three, four years with the old Nintendo system as well, because everybody now has Super Nintendo. I think PlayStation was about to come out. Don't quote me to that. But we were super outdated, um, but we didn't care because the family stuck together and one of my passions was playing baseball. So we found a great baseball team where I used to play with and I actually made the Pee Wee All-Star League not to hype myself up too much. I, uh, I made my first $20 when I was 9, 10 years old, give or take. And that's because my coach said if I would hit a grand slam, he would pay me $20. And I sure enough did. But sad to say, we lost that game by two runs. Possibly why one of the main reasons why I like sports of one man sport. But enough said. Um, timing is everything. My grandma was born in the USA. My parents applied to become US citizens years, years ago. And now it's about 1995. My uh, dad had the same update that the airline wasn't doing so well, but there might not be a chance for him to transfer. So he might need to start looking for a new job. So as my brother and I got bamboozled, we ended up going to Las Vegas to celebrate my birthday, which me and my brother had a filled day because we were at Circus Circus enjoying all the theme parks, arcades, and cool shows while my dad was looking for jobs. And pretty wild to say my dad ended up getting a job working at Stardust. Now it's a huge reality check for you to ask me because he went from being a manager for an airlines to washing dishes but he didn't care because we had the all-American dream, and that's what we did. Stardust Hotel and Casino Hiram, which this is a casino that's not even around anymore. They already leveled them, and I want to say Resorts World is where they're going to... It's been built, but it's supposed to get built today, I think. I mean, it's supposed to get built. I think it's supposed to get built this year. I don't know. But anyways, uh, so we... Packed up once again, but this time we bought a trailer and me and my brother didn't share a room. We share a living room. So we're used to having our own room. Now we have to share a living room and live in a trailer park. We cried and complained plenty of times, but that's what we had to do because we came with the All-American Dream and we stuck together as a family. So what I wanted to do is find some friends or at least a baseball team or a baseball field, but now I'm gonna sound really old. Back then, internet wasn't so accessible. 
So maybe like the story that your dad told you, like I heard multiple times, son, you guys are so lucky. I used to walk barefooted through the snow and, and you guys basically to have buses that take you to school every day. So you shouldn't complain. Well, my story goes, internet wasn't so accessible back then. Plus I didn't speak English that well. Not that I claim that I speak very good English, but hopefully you understand me. I, uh, I just started riding my bike around the neighborhood. And to clarify, it was a little hoopty mountain bike. I wish I had some photos to show you, but I'll try posting something similar to what I used to have back then. And I saw some kids in this random desert jump in out of a hole and sign language of all, they said that they were riding BMX bikes. So I decided to just tag along with them. And uh, weeks went by. I, uh, I, I think I understood what they meant to say that there was a BMX track and they were going to have a national BMX race that weekend. And people not just from the United States, but from all over the world were going to come out to this track and there was going to be races. Whatever reason or whatever happened, I never made it. But the cool thing was... Every weekend, my parents, the only thing they could afford, they would take us out to a buffet to have an amazing dinner with the whole family, which back then was at the Rio. And I can't remember the name of that. Yeah, I don't remember that name of that buffet. But what I do recall, they used to have sections of each world uh, would have their own style of food. So I used to love it. But anywho, we were driving back and I've been very blessed that my parents are very supportive. I told my parents, Hey mom, they're telling me, we were driving back home by the way, they're telling me right around this area there's this BMX track, can we go and check it out? And sure enough, they said, let's go and check it out. And I was like a little kid in the candy store. We pulled into this BMX track and I was like, what in the world is this? Because I saw lights, people with cool uniforms, this skate that holds eight riders and it drops within a split second. This eight riders go around the track and whoever gets to the checker line first wins. I was mind blown. I was like, I have to do this. So I asked my mom, mom, please, please buy me a bike. And she said, mijito, dame un mes o dos meses y te compro una bici. Now, for those of you guys that don't speak Spanish, don't worry. I am your translator so I can help you. She basically said, son, Give me about two to three months and I will buy you a bike. Well, my mom, I don't know how she made this possible, but she outdid herself. She bought me my first BMX bike in about two and a half weeks. But this bike was one of the worst BMX bikes you can ever think of. <laughs> but I didn't care because I treated that bike like if it was gold and the passion became a career that day. So I started racing BMX bikes and I was terrible. My brother used to smoke me all the time and he's four years younger than me. And for any of you guys that ride BMX bikes, four years gap and you can't beat someone that's four years younger than you, that means that you're hopeless. But I was having so much time and I always had the mentality, the hard work will pay off sooner than later. Well, now we're going to have to start fast forward about four to five years. Back then, that track was only open once a week. So once a week, I mean, six days I was not training and only one day technically training. I wasn't going to get the results that I wanted. So I decided to go to this random desert and start building BMX dirt jumps. And back then, there was no YouTube videos on how to build BMX dirt jumps. So I just kind of winged it. And... They were probably the best things of all time, but they gradually started getting better and better. But since I was building in private properties, because back then in 1996 to 1998, Las Vegas was a bigger desert than it already is right now. So there was plenty of land where you can build as much as you want, but the developments were coming in. So when new houses got built, my jumps got destroyed. So my mom at a very young age, which a lot of people already talk about this, it's a life hack for real estate. My mom said that she will buy a fourplex where 
three of those apartments would basically pay the mortgage and we live on the fourth one, meaning that we wouldn't have to pay rent, but it will mean that me and my brother now have to share a room. Hey, I never asked you. Yeah. You like guacamole? <laughs> oh, 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 God! Brennan! Brennan! And let me tell you, when you're 16 years old, the last thing you want when you want to invite your friends over is to have a younger brother in your bedroom that you're sharing with him. But we didn't care because my mom told me at that young age that if we suck it up, she will buy a house with plenty of land where I can build my own BMX paradise. And sure enough, she delivered, but that took about four years. So right before I graduated, my mom bought a awesome home where we had over an acre where I built the best facility of all time. So now I don't have an excuse why I'm not a pretty good BMX rider because I have a good training facility. So with that said, I'm about to graduate. My mom said, what are you about to do? Because if you're going to live under this roof, you have to either A, get a job, or B, go to school, or C, do both. And I said, you know what, mom? I just got done doing 12 years of school. It's time for me to take a break from school. So I'm gonna get a job. And that job was one of the coolest thing ever. I became the lunch dude. <laughs> and it was the best job of all times. And the reason why I loved it is because I would wake up at nine and be out of work by noon. And then all my friends who were still in high school, I'd be waiting for them as I was prepping up the dirt jumps to hopefully get better on my BMXing. So I used to have this big goal of having this lifted truck with TVs. Keep in mind, it's 2001, 2002, and uh, be the cool kid around the neighborhood. So uh, being the lunch dude wasn't going to get me to afford this car and all this bells and whistles. So I became a PE teacher assistant. And then in the meantime, I was finally kind of transitioning from racing into freestyle, meaning I don't do racing. With eight guys, I would technically have a course and compete against other people that ride bikes, whoever can perform the biggest, most explosive, wild run of all times. So uh, I managed to meet a couple guys that had a BMX show team, and they offered me to do a couple shows here and there, which it was great money, but the shows was maybe a couple days here or a fair here and there for a week, so I couldn't quite give up my job. And then that's when I kind of started transitioning to CCSN, which is the community college. I think they already changed their name. I think CSN now. But anyways, I was going to college as well, and the biggest breakthrough of all time happened. A good friend of mine that, that there's nothing wrong to have long hair, tattoos, and piercings, he declined the job by doing shows for a whole summer at Legoland because back then Legoland's policy was no long hair, no tattoos, no piercings. You had to cover your tattoos, take off your piercings and cut your long hair. And this guy decided that he didn't want to do that. So option B, which is me, uh, came in the picture and they offered me the job and that job would take a year and a half of being a P teacher assistant. I made it in three months. So one of the toughest decisions of my BMX career, I guess you would say, is me going back home and telling my parents that I was gonna quit my job and quit school because that job would always be there and I can always go back to school, but I can only be young once. And this is one in a million opportunity to do shows at Legoland. So I moved to San Diego and it was one of the coolest experience of all time. But as I said before, hard work pays off. I decided to, because we didn't get that many days off, and I like days off, I, uh, I asked for two days off, and those two days would mean that I would catch a red-eye flight to fly to New York Friday after doing the shows at Legoland to do practice on Saturday, made finals on Sunday, and then earn an invite for Gravity Games to catch a flight back to San Diego on a red eye to do shows on Monday. So it was pretty wild that I went from each coast of the United States all within like less than four days. Three days? Two days? I mean, I don't know, my math is not good. 
I, uh, so it was one of the coolest thing of all time and, and finally sponsorship kind of started flowing my way, but I wasn't making that much money to basically support myself, but I did make a big chunk of money and I came back home after that summer. So what next thing that I should do? What is the, the next thing I should do? Well, that was invest into real estate when I was 20 years old. I bought my first fourplex in Naked City. Now, a little fun fact, Naked City is called Naked City because back in the 50s, a lot of strippers used to live in that area and used to someday topless. So fun fact why they call Naked City, Naked City here in Las Vegas. But anyways, let's jump back to the story. So now I'm a 20 year old that I am a landlord, which it was kind of mind blowing. So now that I got the bug into real estate and I'm a professional BMX bike rider, I decided to do something else because I had too much free time. All I had to do is ride bikes and whenever things break or whenever I had basically a vacancy, just remodel that home or the apartment. It just, it was still allowing me to have plenty of spare time in my hands. So I decided to go to the Clark County Special Events and talk to one of the main guys there and pitch myself to see if they can add a BMX competition because the name of this event was called Extreme Thing that didn't really cater to the extreme extreme because back then it was X game, extreme, extreme this, extreme that. Uh, I told them, I was like, look, don't pay me but you will have to pay the riders. And if we generate more tickets, then I can maybe get paid that way. And if I do a good job, maybe I can continue getting hired. And it turned out to be a job for 12 years as Extreme Thing became one of the largest music action sports in the whole state of Nevada that attracted at one point over 20,000 people to come and check this event out. And they had over eight stages of music, different activities, and the Ricardo Laguna Pro Dirt Challenge. So pretty cool. But one of the coolest things for me during that event, at one point I was the event organizer, I was the rider, I was the people that fire and hire the basically who work under the umbrella for the Ricardo Laguna Dirt Challenge. And somehow, some way, you managed to get a little bit of coverage of television, and that's when I got the bug for television. So, I got interviewed. But no one is quicker on a bike than Ricardo Laguna. Ricardo Laguna. Here with my man, Ricardo Laguna. The one and only. I hope you enjoyed the Rail Jam contest as much as I did, and hope to see you next episode. And I stuttered a bunch of times. I was like, take, take two. Take. Anyways, I, I remember asking the producer, I was being like, wow, I really like this whole television thing because every time that I mess up is take two, take three, take four, take five, take six, take seven, take, hopefully it didn't take me that many takes. But I was like, wow, this is so cool. I just mess up and do another take and, and I don't have to be learning the wildest tricks out there or, and hopefully not getting injured and whatnot. Wow, I got a little dizzy doing that one. <laughs> So I pitched myself to this producer saying, what about if I'm your host? Because I knew how the show format was. I was like, you can just give me the top three segments. In the meantime, I'm gonna let you check out Eric Chavez doing some work for the Oakland A's. Let's watch him in action. Don't change the channel. Here's what's up next. And I will get you the permission to film my extreme thing because I knew Clark County wanted any publicity. So as that said, I did such a good pitch that she said that I'm going to do a one hour special of the best six episodes of their show and we're going to film that extreme thing. So, as that said, I became a TV host. She's attacking me and she's, ladies and gentlemen, that's me and more without even trying. Wait, I did try because I was pitching myself. Um, but now, as that said, that I got, you know, the bug for television. And the lady said that she liked my charisma. She basically said, hey, you need to meet this guy. 
it's a producer for TV shows. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do with TV shows? What's TV? What, I, what can I do in TV? I'm not an actor. I'm a bike rider. Well, she said, you need to meet this guy. And this guy happens to be Wilma Balderrama, well-known from the 70s show. That's because I'm cool, I'm mundo. Ay. <laughs> Yo, mama. It's your show. Yo, mama. And multiple other things. Actually, not so many people know that he is the voice of Hanny Manny. Let's call Manny. He can fix anything. Oh, you're right. Manny can fix anything. Hanny Manny's repair shop. You break it, we fix it. This is Manny. Oh, hey, Manny. It's Wilmer. So once I met Wilmer, he basically asked me who was my hero. And I said, Wilmer, back then, I couldn't really relate to anyone or no one could be my hero because no one really spoke Spanish when I went to the races or was at the competitions. And I was kind of like the only Hispanic kid moving up on the rankings. So he said, have you ever thought about having a reality TV show? And I said, I mean, sounds kind of cool, but do I have what it takes to become a reality TV star? She says, Carl, let me film you in about two, three weeks and put a sizzle together, pitch it to a couple networks. Two months later, they fly me to Florida where MTV3 is from Viacom basically had a contract waiting for me saying if I wanted to have my own reality TV show called the Ricardo Laguna Project. Imagine moving to a whole new country. You don't know the language and the only thing you can relate to are bikes. This is the story of Ricardo, a Mexican immigrant turned pro BMX rider. But with success comes temptation, especially if you live in Las Vegas. Luckily for Ricardo, his family keeps him grounded. This is his journey. Welcome to the Ricardo Laguna Project. And I was sold. So now I'm a BMX bike rider, an event organizer, and I guess a TV host slash reality TV star? I don't know. You make that call. I still felt like I had too much free time and I wanted to give back. So, um, as that said, I struck out of buying one of the properties when I was about 42, 33 years old. And I had all this money in my bank account. So I said, I can either go and buy an expensive car and basically see my money depreciate or I can invest it somewhere else where I can give back to the community. And that's how the Celebrando Festival came about. <laughs> Hispanic festival that happens here in Las Vegas once a year where we like to showcase food, culture, and music, and at the same time raising money for different charity choices around our state. And up to date, we're almost to $10,000 that we raised, so. Seen on North Las Vegas benefiting the Ronald McDonald House and the Firefighters of Southern Nevada Burn Foundation. This event brings the Hispanic culture to life with music, salsa, and cumbia. We're giving away a fair bit of money to help our community. So, so that said, that's pretty much who Ricardo Laguna is right now. He is the bike rider, he is the landlord, and basically the handyman because when anything goes wrong, I try fixing it until I break it. Well, it broke. <laughs> and that's when I have to hire the experts. And then event organizing, and as well as television. So it's, um, Pretty, almost 39 amazing years, and I cannot wait to see what or how the next 39 years, and hopefully more, because I might be an old guy by then, I need a cane, how they're gonna pan out. So, well, as that said, guys, that is Ricardo Laguna. Now you know who this guy is, but it will still mean the world if you guys hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Ricardo Laguna, I'm off to the next task, and tune in to the next episode.
<laughs> he said action for himself. Okay, what what do you want to talk about? You're on, you're on. Pickles. You're not even looking in the camera. Yeah. 